Hey everyone, have you ever wondered what God's last words were before 400 years of silence? Today, we're diving into the incredible, challenging, and often overlooked book of Malachi, the last prophet of the Old Testament. Malachi's message wasn't just for ancient Israel, it's a wake-up call for all of us today. He speaks directly to those feeling disconnected from God, disappointed, or stuck in going through the motions of their faith. In this video, we'll uncover why Malachi strongly challenged unacceptable sacrifices, corrupt priests, and broken marriages. We'll explore his bold prophecies about a coming messenger who would pave the way for the Messiah and explore his serious warnings about the Day of the Lord, a time of judgment and purification that still matters today. Stay with us until the end to see how Malachi's message is more than just ancient history. It's a powerful call to give God your best, prepare your heart for Christ's return, and live a life of true integrity. If you find value in today's video, don't forget to hit like, drop a comment with your thoughts, and share this with someone who needs to hear it. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Your support helps us continue to bring these timeless truths to more people. Let's get started. Malachi, whose name means my messenger, served as the last prophet of the Old Testament delivering God's final words to his people before a 400-year prophetic silence that would only be broken with the arrival of John the Baptist in the New Testament. Malachi's ministry took place during the post-exilic period, after the Jews had returned from their 70 years of Babylonian captivity and had rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem under the leadership of Zerubbabel. This was a time of great historical significance, the return from exile had fulfilled God's promise through prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah, signaling a new beginning for the nation of Israel. However, while the physical restoration of Jerusalem and the temple had been accomplished, the spiritual renewal of the people lagged far behind. The excitement of returning to their homeland and rebuilding the temple quickly faded, and the people found themselves struggling with disillusionment, spiritual apathy, and economic hardship. The land was under Persian rule, the promised prosperity had not yet come, and the people began to doubt God's love and promises. Malachi's ministry is generally dated around 450 to 430 BC, overlapping with the reforms of Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra focused on spiritual reform, teaching the law and reinstating proper worship practices, while Nehemiah was instrumental in rebuilding the city walls and establishing civil governance. Despite these efforts, Malachi's prophetic words revealed that the people's hearts were far from God. Their worship had become empty, driven more by ritual than by genuine devotion. In this context, Malachi's role was not just to address external religious practices, but to confront the deeper issues of the heart. The Israelites were questioning God's love, offering defiled sacrifices, and breaking their covenant with Him through disobedience and neglect. Malachi's message was a call to genuine repentance, urging the people to renew their covenant with God and to return to a sincere, faithful relationship with Him. Malachi's unique style involves a series of disputes or dialogues between God and the people. Through a question and answer format, God directly addresses the people's doubts and sins. For example, when God declares His love for Israel, the people respond with, how have you loved us? Malachi chapter 1 verse 2. This style emphasizes the relational nature of God's message, showing how he engages with the doubts and disobedience of his people, seeking to draw them back into a loving and committed relationship. Malachi's prophetic work was not just a critique of Israel's failures, but a passionate plea for renewal. He reminded them that God's covenant was still in effect, that God's promises had not failed, and that sincere repentance would bring restoration. His message set the stage for the coming Messiah, pointing forward to a time when God would ultimately fulfill His promises through Jesus Christ. Malachi's prophetic message is marked by a direct confrontation of the spiritual and moral failures of the Israelites, calling them to account for their disobedience and urging them to return to a sincere relationship with God, he addresses several key sins that were prevalent among the people and the priesthood, 
highlighting how these transgressions were not just violations of God's laws, but also betrayals of the covenant relationship God had established with Israel. Number one, defiled offerings. One of the most severe issues Malachi addresses is the offering of defiled sacrifices. The priests who were responsible for maintaining the sanctity of worship were allowing and even encouraging the people to bring blind, lame, and sick animals as sacrifices. This was a direct violation of God's law, which required that sacrifices be without blemish, representing the purity and perfection that God deserved. Malachi chapter 1 verse 8 says, When you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor, will he accept you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts. The offering of defiled animals was not just an act of disobedience, it was a clear indication of the people's contempt for God's altar. They were treating the worship of God as a trivial matter, offering what cost them the least rather than giving their best. God's response through Malachi is both a rebuke and a call to recognize the holiness and worthiness of God, who deserves their best offerings, not their leftovers. Malachi highlights that the people's actions were not just disrespectful, but also hypocritical. They would not dare to present such offerings to their earthly rulers, yet they had no qualms about offering them to God. This behavior revealed their lack of reverence and gratitude toward God, who had delivered them and sustained them throughout their history. Number two, corrupt priests. Malachi also confronts the corruption of the priests who were failing in their duties as spiritual leaders. The priests were meant to be God's messengers, teaching the people his laws and guiding them in the ways of righteousness. Instead, they were leading the people astray through their own misconduct and failure to uphold the covenant. Malachi, chapter 2 verses 7 to 8 states, For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge, and people should seek instruction from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instruction. The priests had compromised their sacred duties, showing partiality in their judgments, and neglecting to teach the truth of God's law. This failure had far-reaching consequences, as it led the entire community away from God. The priests were supposed to be guardians of God's word, but their actions had brought dishonor to their office and had defiled the covenant God made with Levi, the tribe from which priests were chosen. Leviticus chapter 10 verses 10 to 11 mentioned that you are to distinguish between the holy and the common and between the unclean and the clean and you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them by Moses. Malachi's rebuke emphasizes the critical role of spiritual leadership and the devastating impact of leaders who fail to live up to their calling. It serves as a reminder that those who teach and lead others in faith bear a significant responsibility to uphold God's standards. Number three, faithlessness in marriage. Another major issue Malachi addresses is the widespread unfaithfulness in marriage among the people. Men were divorcing their wives for unjust reasons, treating the covenant of marriage with contempt. This was not only a violation of God's law, but also a betrayal of their families and communities. Malachi denounces this behavior as a direct affront to the covenantal nature of marriage, which God had established from the beginning. Malachi chapter 2 verses 14 to 16 says, But you say, why does he not? Because the Lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth, to whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. The dismissal of marriage vows was a symptom of the broader spiritual decay among the people. By breaking faith with their spouses, they were also breaking faith with God. Malachi's words underscore the sacredness of marriage as a reflection of God's covenant relationship with his people, a relationship meant to be characterized by faithfulness, love, and commitment. Number four, robbing God through tithes and offerings. Malachi also confronts the people for robbing God by withholding their tithes and offerings. 
the law required the Israelites to bring a tenth of their produce, livestock, and income to the temple to support the priests and Levites, as well as to maintain the house of God. However, the people were neglecting this obligation, and as a result, the temple and those who served there were suffering. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 to 10 states, Will man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How have we robbed you in your tithes and contributions? Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing, until there is no more need. By withholding their tithes, the people were not just neglecting their financial obligations, but were demonstrating a lack of trust in God's provision. God invites them to test Him in this, to bring the full tithe and see the blessings that would follow. This passage highlights that generosity and obedience in giving are acts of faith that acknowledge God as the ultimate provider. Malachi's call to restore faithful tithing was not merely about meeting financial needs, but about restoring a heart of worship and trust in God. It was an invitation to return to God with their whole hearts and to experience the fullness of His blessings. Through these confrontations, Malachi's message is clear. God desires sincere worship, faithful leadership, covenant loyalty, and generosity from His people. His rebukes are not meant to condemn, but to call Israel back to a vibrant and true relationship with Him, one marked by integrity, reverence, and wholehearted devotion. Now, let's explore further about the promise of a coming messenger. One of the most profound and hopeful aspects of Malachi's prophecy is his foretelling of a future messenger who would prepare the way for the Lord. This prophecy holds a significant place in the biblical narrative as it bridges the gap between the Old and New Testaments, setting the stage for the arrival of John the Baptist and, ultimately, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Malachi's words serve as a final prophetic voice pointing forward to the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan through the coming of the Savior. Malachi speaks of a time when God will intervene directly in human history, sending a messenger to prepare the way for the Lord's arrival. This prophecy is foundational in understanding the continuity of God's plan from the Old Testament promises to the New Testament fulfillment. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. This passage is a clear reference to John the Baptist, who would come centuries later to prepare the hearts of the people for the arrival of Jesus. John's role was to call people to repentance, baptizing them as a sign of their readiness to receive the Messiah. His mission was not just about announcing Christ's arrival, but also about urging the people to turn away from their sins and align their lives with God's will. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, a voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Isaiah's prophecy echoed by Malachi finds its fulfillment in John the Baptist. The Gospel writers confirm this connection, highlighting John's ministry as the direct fulfillment of Malachi's words. John's message of repentance and his call to prepare for the Lord's coming were direct fulfillments of the prophetic vision that Malachi had described. Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Malachi's prophecy also emphasizes the suddenness and the refining nature of the Lord's coming. When Malachi says, The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, it signifies the unexpected yet long-awaited appearance of God himself, embodied in Jesus Christ, who would come to purify and refine his people. This purification was not merely a physical or ceremonial cleansing, but a deep spiritual renewal that would transform the hearts of those who would follow him. Malachi chapter 3 verses 2 to 3 But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? 
for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. The imagery of the refiner's fire and fuller's soap emphasizes the thorough and intense purification process that God's people would undergo. Jesus, the messenger of the covenant, would not only bring salvation but also call his followers to a life of holiness and transformation. This refining process involves burning away impurities, symbolizing God's desire to cleanse his people of sin and restore them to righteousness. Malachi's prophecy about the coming messenger is not only a prediction of John the Baptist's ministry, but also a direct foreshadowing of Jesus' work. Jesus is the ultimate messenger of the covenant who fulfills God's promises and brings the new covenant through his death and resurrection. His coming was the ultimate act of God's intervention, offering redemption and calling people to a renewed relationship with God. Luke chapter 1 verses 76 to 77 And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. John the Baptist's role as the forerunner to Christ was a direct fulfillment of Malachi's prophecy, paving the way for the Savior to bring the ultimate act of redemption. His ministry laid the groundwork for the transformative message of Jesus, who would not only purify, but also empower his followers to live in righteousness. John chapter 1 verse 29 The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Malachi's prophecy serves as a reminder that God's plans unfold in his perfect timing. The coming of the messenger and the Messiah was not just about fulfilling ancient prophecies, but about God's ongoing commitment to his people, a commitment to bring them into a deeper, purer relationship with himself. The refining work that began with Christ continues in the hearts of believers today, as they are shaped and purified to reflect His image. Now, let's further explore the concept of the Day of the Lord. The concept of the Day of the Lord is a significant theme in Malachi's prophecy, as it represents a future time of divine intervention when God will bring judgment upon the wicked and reward the faithful. This day is characterized by both severity and hope, reflecting God's justice and mercy. Malachi's description of the day of the Lord serves as both a warning to those living in sin and a promise of vindication and restoration to those who remain faithful to God. Malachi warns that this day will be like a burning oven, an intense, all-consuming fire that will destroy the arrogant and evildoers. This vivid imagery underscores the certainty of God's judgment against sin, emphasizing that no wrongdoing will go unpunished. For the wicked, the day of the Lord represents a time of reckoning where their rebellion against God will be met with severe consequences. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. The use of the terms stubble and blaze highlights the totality of God's judgment. Just as stubble is quickly consumed by fire, so too will the unrepentant face complete destruction. This is a reminder that God's justice is not arbitrary, it is thorough and absolute. The arrogant and those who reject God's ways will find no refuge on this day, as the consuming fire will eliminate every trace of their sinfulness. However, Malachi's message about the day of the Lord is not solely one of destruction, it also carries a profound promise of hope and renewal for those who fear the Lord. For the faithful, the day of the Lord is not a day to be feared, but one to be anticipated with great expectation. Malachi contrasts the fate of the wicked with the future of the righteous, painting a beautiful picture of God's healing and restorative power. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. The Son of Righteousness symbolizes the coming of Christ, whose light dispels darkness and brings healing to those who revere God's name. 
This imagery of light and healing serves as a powerful counterpoint to the consuming fire of judgment. While the wicked are burned up, those who fear the Lord are bathed in the warmth and light of God's righteousness, experiencing healing and restoration. The phrase, healing in its wings, suggests not only physical restoration, but also spiritual renewal. It speaks of God's desire to heal the wounds of His people, to restore what has been broken, and to bring joy and freedom. The imagery of leaping calves released from a stall captures the exuberant freedom and joy that God's people will experience in His presence, freed from the burdens of sin and suffering. Malachi's prophecy echoes the broader biblical theme of God's refining process, where the righteous are purified and the wicked are judged. This refining fire is not meant to harm the faithful, but to purify them, removing impurities and making them holy. God's judgment is always purposeful, aimed at restoring and redeeming His people. The day of the Lord also serves as a call to repentance. Malachi urges his audience to turn back to God before this day arrives, reminding them that there is still time to change their ways. God's patience and desire for repentance are evident as He provides this warning not to condemn, but to give people the opportunity to return to Him. Malachi's prophecy is both a warning and a promise. It reminds us that God's justice will ultimately prevail, and no evil will go unpunished. At the same time, it assures the faithful that God's righteousness will bring healing, joy, and restoration. The day of the Lord is a call to live in the light of God's truth, to embrace His refining work in our lives, and to look forward with hope to the ultimate fulfillment of His promises. Now, what Malachi's message relevant today? Malachi's message, though delivered over 2400 years ago, transcends time and culture, speaking directly to the hearts of believers today. His call to faithfulness, integrity, and true worship challenges us to examine our relationship with God in a world that often prioritizes convenience, comfort, and self-interest. The themes Malachi addresses, half-hearted worship, spiritual apathy, and compromised leadership, are still prevalent issues in modern Christianity, making his prophetic voice as vital today as it was for ancient Israel. Malachi confronts the Israelites for offering defiled sacrifices, a reflection of their casual attitude toward worship. This same attitude can be seen today when we give God less than our best, offering Him only what is convenient rather than what is truly sacrificial. The prophet's challenge urges us to consider whether we are honoring God with the first fruits of our time, talents and resources, or if we are merely giving Him the leftovers of our lives. Malachi's repeated call for Israel to return to God is a timeless message of repentance and renewal. He calls out the people's spiritual complacency and reminds them that God desires their hearts, not just empty rituals. This message is highly relevant today as many struggle with going through the motions of faith without true connection to God. Malachi's rebuke of the Israelites for offering blemished sacrifices challenges us to reflect on the quality of our own offerings to God. Are we giving God our best or are we giving Him what costs us little? This question resonates today as we consider how we invest our time, energy and resources. God is worthy of our best and Malachi reminds us that worship is about the heart and the intention behind what we give. Malachi addresses not only the people but also the leaders, challenging them to live with integrity and to lead with righteousness. This is especially pertinent today as the church faces challenges with leadership that can sometimes stray from God's truth. Malachi's call is a reminder that those in positions of influence bear a significant responsibility to guide others faithfully. Malachi's emphasis on preparing for the coming of the Lord was relevant for the first advent of Christ, but it also speaks to us as we anticipate His second coming. The urgency of Malachi's message reminds us that we are living in a time of grace, a period where God's call to repentance and readiness remains open. Just as Malachi called Israel to prepare for the Messiah, we too are called to live in a state of preparedness, looking forward to Christ's return. Malachi's message is a powerful call to holiness, challenging us to evaluate the authenticity of our faith 
and the quality of our worship. His words remind us that God is not interested in half-hearted devotion. He desires a wholehearted relationship with us, marked by sincerity, obedience, and love. Holiness is not just an ancient command. It is the standard for all who follow Christ. Malachi's call to purity, faithfulness, and reverence for God's name resonates as a reminder of what it means to live as God's people today. Malachi's prophetic words remain a powerful reminder that God's expectations of faithfulness, integrity, and readiness are not bound by time. His call to return to God, to give Him our best, and to live with anticipation of Christ's coming is as relevant today as ever. As we reflect on Malachi's message, we are invited to examine our hearts, renew our commitment to God, and live each day in a way that honors Him. Thank you for watching. If you found this message meaningful, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth studies of the Bible. And remember the God who spoke through Malachi is still speaking to us today.